My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Now, those are the words of that author. Now, tell him your own. As a man that had an encounter with God and began to pour out of the fountains of the Spirit, making commitment to Jesus, can you now make your own personal commitment in your own words? Sometimes you're overtaken by the, the emotions and you forget that this same utterances that you are singing in a melody were statements that people made and their lives were hinged on them. Sometimes when you sing these songs in the beauty, in the melody, you, forgot, you forget that these are statements that people made and they died for them. And most of them died laughing. Some died happy. Some died excited. Some died counting it an honor to die for Jesus. Can you speak your own words now? Can you allow your own commitment to come out like a river and you pour yourself to Jesus? Make a commitment. Make a commitment. <laughs> Spirit, partner with men of covenants. They partner with men of covenants. A man that has no commitment will weigh not much on the scales of eternal balances. He will not be so relevant in the hands of the Spirit. Every spirit that is in partnership with a mortal entity is in partnership on account of covenants. That's why sometimes, because they want to secure commitment, they do it by blood. Because they understand the ways of mortal men. Mortal men are free. They are not committed to anything. They take off when the pressure becomes intense. That's why sometimes they, they make you take a vow. But an honorable man will make a statement and his life can hang on it. Can you make a commitment to Jesus? From the depths of your heart. Sometimes I wonder how these men are able to secure these words. Very choice, choice words. By what wisdom do they come up, come about these words? That a man can make a statement, a statement, and the totality of his life can be gathered around that statement. How do they, where do they speak these words from? You hear the content of a man's prayer, and you, you, you are, you are bewildered. By what wisdom? Can a man speak like this? Where do they secure these walls from? How do they come about these options? With all my strength, with all my heart, I will seek to honor ah, his commands. of wisdom there are strange kinds of knowledge that are locked up in crucibles in the spirit it takes a man that can ascend to touch those portals there are dangerous kinds of wisdom that are locked away from the minds of mortal men have you not wondered how it becomes so difficult for you to pray when you are on the ground level but suddenly as you ascend to the heights of the mountains your tongue becomes fluid 
and you begin to speak from a vault of knowledge that is beyond everything you can contemplate on the scales of your cerebral intellect. There are realms in God. Only men of commitment can ascend to those heights. It's not a place for everybody. These ones are numbered as overcomers. In the annals of eternity, when the scales are open and men are counted in their scales, in their authority sphere, it is the levels of knowledge they entered into an account of commitment that we speak. There is a place where you go in God that you don't need walls to utter. The body is in your heart. The substance of your life becomes a very loud utterance. There are places where you go in God that the very content of your heart becomes an alarm. The wisdom of God that you have entered into. The things that you have secured in God. They become the utterances that you speak on your account. Can you make a commitment? A lot of people only say the things they heard from other people. These things they are saying, they cut those things in the spirit. They cut them in the spirit. I heard Bishop Oedeko, after a three days fast on the mountain, he was beaten by rain. As he was coming down from the mountain, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He said, I have touched your tongue with the coal of fire. From this day, as you say it, you will see it happen. You can listen to his messages and quote the same scriptures he quote. You will not have the same manifestation. He is talking from a realm of intimacy. A depth where he traveled into. Because he poured out his life to Jesus. Can you make a commitment? Some of us have not even journeyed with God to a level where we have a personal name for him. Because we don't know anything about his faithfulness. <laughs> the names of God you call today, they are encounters that men have with God. They trap them in form of names. So that as you journey through those names, they become a memorial. Those names are gateways into the realms of the encounters they have. Because they entered into those portals in God. It became accessible by humankind. Those names were not there. They framed those names because of what they found God to be to them. Some of us have not even journeyed with God to a level where we can rely on God on any aspect of His reality. We don't know Him. No wonder we are free. No wonder we are feeble. No wonder it's as if darkness is encroaching and nobody can rise up and keep the gates. Can we make commitments tonight? Church is not about a beautiful message. Ministry is an overflow of your of your of your walk with Jesus. It is a, an outpouring of intimacy. Can you make a commitment? If you are able to come to that point where you can make a commitment to Jesus, then the meeting is fulfilled. The Bible said, even the very creation, the very creation, in their travail. They have one expectation. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. In their travail, they are waiting. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Can you make a commitment to Jesus? How Jesus desired men to make commitments. How Jesus desired men to make commitments. Can we sing that song one more time? Sing with understanding. It's not somebody sitting down trying to sing a good song. It's a overflow. Men waited on God until they came to him. There is no way they could give expression to the things that happened in their heart. So they sang them out in common songs. Precious Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you for the privilege of bringing us under the canopy of your spirit once again to be instructed in your ways and to be granted access into realms of reality where we can be furnished with light, granted empowerment to advance your purposes on the face of the earth. We align ourselves with you, Lord. And we make a solemn decree and a statement tonight that that which you utter by your spirit we will obey. 
we ask that you will raise from among us mighty men, mighty women, that we stand as gatekeepers, custodians, and watchers over territories. Men that will be so aligned to your government that that same dimension of your reality that is locked up in heaven will begin to find expression on our landscape. We ask that from among us, Lord, a new order of civilization will emerge from the church and invade this realm. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you very much. When we pick a sound, you you come and give expression to it. <laughs> Once again, it's an honor to be here this evening to bring you the word of the Lord. I don't take for granted this privilege. I want to specially salute my brother for affording me this opportunity. Can you please celebrate Pastor Bernard? <laughs> Give God praise for all he's doing in his life and all he's yet going to do. Thank you very much, sir, for being a blessing. Salute all the ministers of God. Thank you for coming. We trust that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We didn't have so much liberty last night to look upon the scriptures the burdens that Pastor Bernard was sharing were very contagious I walked into the building and I was caught up in the web of the burdens that he was trying to give expression to and as he handed over the mic it was as if he transferred the burden to me and them We just flowed as the Spirit granted us the enablement to. This evening I want to just come down and share the word of the Lord with us. So that our minds will be instructed. We will be brought into an understanding of what God wants to do. And then we will be granted the enablement. Even as we minister by the Spirit of the living God. To become that which we will be hearing so that the impact will not just be felt within our landscape but that men will yet be webbed into what will be revealing to them and it will become a continuous sequential transfer of the life and the purposes of God by the help of the spirit of the living God we began yesterday by looking at what you can call the technology of witnessing trying to establish that everything we do as a church is rooted in the spirit and that there is nothing we could do as a body of believers outside of the realities that are already rooted in the spirit every attempt to advance a purpose that is not bettered from the spirit we lack the energy and the ability to bring it to pass and that is because like I told you yesterday everything that is formed outside of the enclave of the spirit of the living God has one destination it's called vanity it's called corruption So even if you exert your will, exert the energy of the flesh to do something in the natural, you will not be striking a chord in the realm of the spirit. And if you do not by any means strike a chord in the realm of the spirit, everything you have done, you may receive the applause of men, but it does not trigger attention in the realm where it matters. 
It will not translate to reward and it will not advance the purpose of God. As beautiful as it is for a church to be erect, erected in a location, the goal of God is not buildings. So if God had not mandated, I'm trying to use what you will see as very spiritual, so you will get my point. Are we together? As beautiful, as spiritual as it may be, if it is not mandated by God, and then everything you are doing within and around that region is not powered by the Spirit of God, even if you succeed in gathering a multitude of people, it will not strike a chord in the realm where it matters. Because everything we do in the natural has one purpose. The purpose is to colonize the earth realm. If you journey to the beginning, you will realize that when God created the visible creation, he, had a, he made an attempt, an attempt to colonize the whole territory. So he planted a garden. He called it Eden. And Eden is not just a location. It's an atmosphere of God's reality. It's a doorway into heaven. It's a place where there is an alignment between heaven and earth. And the goal of that gate is to ensure that everything that is domicile in the heavens can find expression in the earth realm. In fact, the whole earth would have been hidden. But God had other goals and objectives. God wanted to have participation with man. So he brought the seed in the form of Eden. But through participation with man, man was expected to colonize the whole earth and transfer the reality of Eden into every region of the earth. Now, these are very sacred assignments that the Lord has committed to humanity. And it is in the fortress of this assignment that the purposes of God can find expression. So that as the earth is mirroring the dimensions of heaven, the man that God has put in the earth will also become more and more like God. So at the end of the day, heaven and earth will not be so different, so to say. God could be in heaven and just show up in the earth realm and there will be no difference. There will be no truncation in flow or in fellowship. Are we together now? So man could also join into heaven and participate in activities in heaven. So much so that you will have a oneness that cannot be distinguished by any scale. But you see, Lucifer had an understanding. He had an understanding that God had an objective. You know, before the fall of the earth, Lucifer was the angel that was in charge. He was like the governor of the earth realm. So he had understanding that God had a purpose. But you see, because of the all-knowing capacity of God, he did not advance with that purpose because he knew the end from the beginning. So that purpose was not committed to Lucifer because it was not going to find expression. Are we together now? Are you following? Are you following? So when God came back to restore the fallen creation, the only way by which that which God wants to do will be actualized is for man to journey back into the spirit, to fetch of the realities that are obtainable in the spirit and plant them in the earth realm. So everywhere you experience impossibility or inability to journey into the spirit, you don't have the authority to establish on the earth. And immediately you lack the authority to establish on the face of the earth, you lose relevance in the equation of things. Because the reason you are here after your salvation is not just for you to journey through the path of transformation and become like God. It's for you to establish purposes that are trapped in your dispensation. So that that which God wants to achieve in the end of time will be achieved when the fullness of time is achieved. That is because everyone that comes upon the landscape would have fulfilled their own quota. At the end of the day, when you look from eternity, then you will discover that what Daniel did in his day was not different from what you are doing. Daniel only played a part that you are coming to do. And after you are gone, somebody else will do the same thing. It's a wisdom playing out in the form of a chain. And every one of us that align with the spirit of the living God are given the privilege to participate in the building of this project that has an eternal scope. Are we together? But the only basis by which this is going to be achieved is going to be on the frequency of your ability to draw from the spirit. 
So if some of the scriptures we opened yesterday was scriptures like Matthew chapter 16 verse 16 when Jesus asked who do men say I am? And Peter by the spirit of God gave an answer that did not have its bearing from his mind. Because Jesus said flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. He said my father which is in heaven is the one that has revealed this to you. And he said thou art Petros upon this Petra, thou art Peter upon this revelation my church will be built. The revelation is a strategy, a strategy by which God is going to be advancing his purposes. So Peter and the activity that he was able to present through, through the spirit of the living God became a strategy that is a prototype for every believer that wants to be relevant in this context and in this dispensation. Everything you are going to do that will pass the records of Jesus will have to be born from the spirit. And the princes of this world are also aware so every time you go to a place and you begin to carry out an activity, no matter how spiritual it is, so long as it was not born from the Spirit, they will look at you and just be laughing. Because they know that authority is only imparted when it is fetched from the Spirit. You see, that was why the sons of Skiva, they went to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. And the demons, the demon, the, the demon possessed laughed at them. You see, this is not how this thing works. You see, the people that got it from the Spirit, there is a register in heaven. And their names are there. So when we see these people, even if they don't shout, because their names are captured in that register, they have an authority over us. So when they speak, we are under obligation to obey. He said, Jesus, I know. He said, Paul, I know. What you are doing is an exercise in the flesh. And so long as you are exercising the flesh, you are under my dominion. Because I am in a government. A government that I am aligned to is martial by one who is called the God of this world. So anything you can create within the crucible of this world is under my authority. So you can't start a church that is inspired in your senses and uninstall in demonic installation. You can't start a church that is inspired by your senses, your appetite, and disarm a principality in the territory. You know why? Because you are do all of what you are doing was born from the sphere of the dominion of darkness. Until you can jolly past the gates of darkness and enter into the realm of light. <laughs> you don't have authority. So I told you that was why when God showed up, he told Job, he said, Ah, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? He said, Declare now if you have to, if you have understanding. The only basis by which you can make a statement in the operations that are ongoing is when you have understanding. And understanding in this context is that which is revealed to you from the realm of God. Because what Job did not understand is that his life was a window through which God was establishing a dominion. The life of Job was supposed to be a gate that proves God as the faithful one. Faithfulness that transcends life. So much so that if you are working with God, even if everything fails and everything that can describe your reality at a time is dead, God can still be faithful to turn back death to life. You know, that's the definition of faith. God is him that called those things that be not as though they were. The life of Job was supposed to be a pictorial depiction of everything that God is as far as faith and faithfulness is concerned. But Job began to judge himself, judge his reality from the scales of his mind. And he said, oh, if only you had understanding, you would have checked with me in the archives of heaven. And you would have known that this thing that is happening to you, it was written and framed into the foundations of the world. That was why when Job, Jesus, God came to answer Job, he didn't talk about his circumstance. He said, where were you when I modeled the foundations of the world? This thing that is happening to you was weaved into creation. And it was weaved into creation because I want to give an expression to a part of me. So that many generations that will come after you, when they look upon your life, then they can have faith in God. The only way you will be relevant is to pass through this situation. Because this situation is part of your ordination. And as you journey through it faithfully, your life will become a cinema. Anybody that looks upon Job, then he will go back and check his own self and discover that, oh, nothing is too late with God. He said, but because you separated yourself from the spirit, you began to judge in the natural. And the moment you began to judge in the natural, you lost your stature. You know, in the calendar of men, Job at that time was the greatest of all men in the East. He didn't know the reason he was great was not because of his possession. He was great because of who he was in God. And the moment he spoke out of tune, he disaligned himself. So God came back and restored him back to the spirit. So the technology of witnessing, the technology of betting civilization, the technology of establishing the purposes of God is first of all factored in the spirit. 
So all the route we were taking yesterday was to show us how to align with the Holy Spirit so that he can teach us how to join into his realm to secure reality so that we can affect them on earth. You see, there are a lot of people with so many ambitions. And they demonstrate a lot of attitude about it. Lot of ambitions. Somebody just sits down. I, I know the Bible to a very good extent. I, I can explain one or two things. And I have grace to pray. I think I should start a church. So he starts the church. And then people come. He writes out a vision. Very elaborate vision. How he wants to conquer the territory. <laughs> you see how spiritual it looks. And because of this bogus, bogus vision that he has, that has been born in his soul, he begins to demonstrate some kind of strange attitude to conform with his spiritual status for the season so you see them they stop laughing so much there's a way they walk as men of the spirit <laughs> so he starts the church people gather there's a way he comes into the auditorium even his tongues has a bass ah! Ah! <laughs> so when the when the when the principalities check check, let's go. Ah, we didn't see this guy cross into light. There's no authority backing what he's doing. So they allow him when he moves for like five years, because there's no grace. The energy that he secured first in walking with God, he depletes that energy. Then they perfect him from every side. The first thing they'll do, they'll gather all the fine ladies within that region, and all of them will come to the church. <laughs> Then they make a mess out of his life. If he was walking with God, perhaps, perhaps, he would have become something. But he caught an ambition. And he gave expression to this ambition in a very spiritual fashion. But what he failed to understand is that anything that is not born of the spirit is flesh. Jesus said, what is spirit is spirit. What is flesh is flesh. If you like, let it be prayer. I know many people that come to pray and they just carry the mic. What? When you hear tongues, when you hear tongues, <laughs> but all they are doing is try to show somebody that they are men of prayer. That which is flesh is flesh. So we must master the art of journeying into the spirit. That's where reality is found. Everything that is built outside of the Holy Spirit has one destination it's corruption, it will waste. It will not pass the test of the mortars because they have very rigid policies that governs the operation. They have very high standards by which they judge everything that is done on the air trail. What is the technology? By what means can what you do become relevant with God? The reason many people are in church for 10 years but they don't have any impact in heaven, they are not even known in heaven, is because they undermine some of these protocols if you come into churches do eye service around the man of god when the man of god is around you labor you walk everybody they are, you are mopping you are doing everything and then they say kai, kai, kai. this guy is committed this guy is committed and they grow through the ladder after five years they become dickens then their reality begins to manifest dickens will now come to church and dickens becomes an instructor that's who he is but he masqueraded himself in spirituality and he went through the ladder. Sometimes they even become pastors. And then they say, God, this guy is a man of prayer. The way this guy leads prayers, there's something. They now send him to a, to a, a territory. Because he's a man of prayer, let him open the territory. <laughs> then for the first time, the guy realized that prayer is interaction with spirits. It's not an activity in the natural. They judged him based on the volume of his voice. And the length of his prayers, they now, in, 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 in the purest form of sincerity, they now send him to a territory where they are trying to crack. And since God has raised this vessel, let him crack this territory because there is a lot of potential. And they send man of God. And man of God goes there after two months, he begins to send message for help. He becomes save our souls. <laughs> You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh Kadosh. 
<laughs> you are mighty on the throne. You reign, you ancient Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. generation that you can have a pastor who will join congregational prayer for four hours but he cannot pray in his closet for 30 minutes <laughs> you say he's a man of prayer but when you go to his house you'll be amazed it's only in our generation that men come out quote scriptures but you go to their house and you don't need them to study the bible for 10 minutes it's only in our generation that men go for meeting and before going for meeting they look they listen to other people's messages and they go to preach the same Whereas, in the days of old, people tracked revelation from the Spirit. The apostle said something. He said, knowing this first, no prophecy of the Scriptures of any individual interpretation. Holy men of God speak as they were carried by the Spirit of God. Only men who were carried into the Spirit had authority to give perspective and to give instruction to people. But in our generation, men don't need to be carried. It's in our generation that men look upon concordances. It's in our generation that a man wants to preach on healing and he goes to type healing on Google. Google give them inspiration and they want to come and treat people healing. They don't know that healing is not an act. Healing is a personality in the spirit. And until you journey into healing, you can never give expression to healing in time. It's a holy man of God. They speak as they were carried by the spirit of God. It's only in our generation that we have caught everything that is spiritual into the crucible of naturality. We have made a mess of the things that are termed hallowed in the kingdom of God. You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your reign, your reign, your reign. the beginning was the world. The world was with God and the world was God. He said the same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. He said in him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. What was he trying to say? Jesus is the compendium of everything that God is. But Jesus lived for 30 years. He never preached a message until he was carried by the Holy Ghost. When he came to preach, the Bible called him light. He said that it might be fulfilled that it was spoken by Isaiah the prophet in the land of Zebulun, in the land of Nathan, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people that sat in darkness, he said they have seen a great light. Even though he was the word, he didn't tell anybody anything until he became by the Spirit. <laughs> he said, For their sakes, I sanctify myself that they too might be sanctified. <laughs> See, in our generation, that men go to gather things. And they fill their mind. You want to do a spiritual activity on the frequency of cerebrality. Corruption creeps into the church. It is not coming as sin. It's coming as a wisdom and intelligence from the demonic realm to denature things that are hallowed. So that the things that have immortal significances are reduced to cerebral realities. Somebody comes to minister in the church. And then it comes from and it just anywhere. Some are on Facebook chatting with people, watching movies and then they jump from the movies and you come to carry the microphone in church. 
corruption, corruption. When we sing, we, we give access to dimensions of darkness that were not out from church. We are the gateways and the chambers that demons are using to invade the church. He said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they too might be sanctified. <laughs> you think it's about talent. The message you preach yesterday is no longer relevant. Because there is a word of God for everybody part time. Apostle calls it the present revelation position of the spirit. That's why we remain plugged into the spirit. That by all means we may secure something. <laughs> Sometimes you prepare for a meeting. And until you come to the pulpit, you don't have a message. You stay there worshiping God. Not because you are there to worship. You are asking for mercy. Because until he speaks, you have nothing to say. It's not about the scriptures you have. We are not a compendium of knowledge. We are witnesses of this life. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you reign, you reign. You are mighty. You reign. The faith calling. I was raised in the faith calling. We pride ourselves in scriptures. We pride ourselves in scriptures. Till I met Apostle Warum He was talking, he had not even quoted scripture. But when he spoke, he fired something into my spirit. And that was the day he told me, He said, When we speak, we deposit God in the heart of man. We are not educating their minds. As fast as he is, he told me before he goes for a message, he spends at least three hours speaking in tongues so that his tongue can become fluid. That was when I discovered the difference between oratory and utterance. And orator, he has dexterity of speech, but a man that has utterance, he speaks from heaven. He's telling you what God is saying by time. He communicates God as a person to your spirit man. That's why you go for a meeting. You don't know what the guy said. But suddenly you begin to discover that you hate iniquity. You come for a meeting. Maybe you had a plan to go clubbing. But as you left that meeting, you left with a body. The desire for the club dissipates from your heart. If they ask you what did the man preach, you will not remember. He is not telling you stories. He is not educating your mind. He imparted God into your spirit. Whereas you can go for a meeting where the, the scriptures are exercised with so much intelligence, systematically. You have everything that the preacher said in your head, but your life is still a contradiction of that which was spoken. It is a realm from when they are talking from. When the Holy Ghost begins to help you, you begin to repent every day. <laughs> we come for meetings as men of God and we sit down weighing the people. Was he talking? All right, okay, this one is correct, this one is correct. <laughs> When you meet Jesus, you understand that even a donkey can instruct you. Apostles chapter 2. And when I read, I read from verse 4 down to verse 36. And I said, what did Peter preach? What did this man preach? But the Bible said, their hearts was pricked. He was not talking to their heads. They heard him. It was their hearts that responded. They have understanding. So their hearts were pricked. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? <laughs> you know, after Peter preached, he had not even spoken about salvation. 
He just gave them a narrative of why Jesus is the Christ. But the people were hearing salvation. It was after they asked, what shall we do to be saved, that Peter began to tell them about salvation. They heard in their hearts. The arrogance of our generation. The folly, the magnitude of folly is amazing. Go ahead and repent. Ask the Lord to talk to you. <laughs> Mondo Safranata Liga para para Bapundo Sakeria The credentials you cannot help but wonder why would this kind of being, if he is what his, this Bible says he is, why would he have want to have anything to do with it? And with the magnitude of his power, if he really wants to do something, does he need me to do it? <laughs> when you are when you begin to discern God, you begin to humility begins to beckon on you. Before you hold the microphone to speak, if it tells on you that you are speaking for God, you will go back and ask for help. <laughs> you are talking, you you are talking for God. <laughs> and then people come and make a post, a post of things they don't know their origins. <laughs> a post. If you are even able to discern the credentials of demons, demons. It's God that we have been someone to participate with and we take for granted. If you know what he, what he is, not who he is, every time you kneel down to pray, you will not have the boldness to look up. Sometimes what you need is not a message. It's for certain truths to begin to down on you. That's why I say, behold, behold. He said, behold. You know, when Paul first of all said, him that is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. He said, all things have passed away. He now said, behold. The word behold means, become aware. See, it is possible for me to tell you all these things, but it may not make sense to you. Sometimes what you need is to become aware where you are first of all standing. If you know what the church is, if you know what the congregation of the righteous is, 
Every time you stand, you will stand in humility. The things you know, if only you are aware of what they are, you will not be where you are. <laughs> when you become aware of what it means to be summoned, to be a partaker, when you become aware that whenever we gather, he is in our midst. <laughs> it's in church nowadays that a lot of people do their, their chat on WhatsApp and on Facebook. It just shows what, what they know. understood a lot of things. When I see a preacher preaching, and then they'll say, do you see this? My God! My God! Just look at this. What is he doing? What is he talking now that he's doing all those things? Somebody will say something. He say, don't you say, come on! So we see and do like And I'll say, ah, what is he doing? What did he say now that he's doing that? Because I judged every, every statement in my head. When I became aware of certain things, if a man said righteousness, if they just mention righteousness, something moves on my inside. I begin to ask for mercy. I became aware what it meant. But somebody can preach a whole doctrine of righteousness. And then when he's crying, talking about hair, talking about the urgency of salvation, and you will just, what, what drama is this guy acting here? It won't mean, mean anything to you. The problem is not with the man. The Bible said the carnal man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What he's doing is foolishness to you because you cannot know. You can't know. You need to be carried. The life of a Christian begins in the Spirit. It begins in the Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 13, He said, No man has been to heaven at any time except the Son of Man, which is in heaven he was standing on earth while he was talking from heaven the beauty of our walk with the holy spirit is that for the first time we have the privilege of going to that realm where jesus speaks from so when you witness now you witness like the christ a man who is accurate in his doctrine a man who is accurate in his message what he's saying if the spirit is open that's the same thing jesus is saying to the people the exact thing because he's expected to be talking from heaven. As the technology of witnessing. You may be seated. God bless you. Before we take the part of yesterday again. I wanted to show you a few things before we begin to pray. When I was waiting on the Lord today, my heart was boiling. My heart was boiling. Things were opening. Things were flying past. Things were flying past. And suddenly, as I was praying on the bed, a being held my leg. And it was as though they placed, the hand was like an ice block. I was so afraid that I didn't even look. He held my leg. And I heard in my spirit, he said, teach them truth. Transformation is the goal. It's not manifestation. Tomorrow will be an impartation session. Tomorrow I will have the liberty to fly. But today he said, teach them truth. A lot of people are willing, but they don't know how. Some know what, but they don't know how. Because nobody has settled down to show them how. So the crisis of their life is not a crisis of rebellion. It's their inability to understand how. If they knew better, they would have done what they are instructed to do. In the technology of witnessing, you must hear from the Godhead. 
to be accurate. Are we together? In the technology of witnessing, you must hear from the Godhead to be accurate. You see, the Godhead is fused into one entity. So every time the Father is doing something, the Son is also doing and the Spirit is doing. Before a man can witness, he must perceive what the Godhead is doing in order to be accurate. And as I begin to open the scriptures, I will show you what I mean and then I will explain to you how and the significances of your interaction with the Godhead in order to be accurate in your witness. Are we together? The scripture I began with, for example, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. You know, it was Jesus that asked the question. And when Peter answered Jesus, Jesus gave a striking statement. The Lord quickened the, the God, the, the Father quickened the understanding in Peter. Are we together? That understanding came to Peter by the Spirit. And Jesus explained the significance of that which he received. That's an accurate witness. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, You know, he didn't know what was going on. He felt maybe a thought just came to his mind. He felt he was being intelligent. You know, once in a while you can be a genius and all of that. And Jesus began to give interpretation. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father. Who brought that knowledge? It was the Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Jesus now is beginning. Jesus has brought his own part into the witness. What you receive came from the Father. And of course, if you study the scripture, you know it is the spirit that quickens. Are we together? And Jesus is now giving explanation to what has happened. If not, even though Peter brought that revelation, you will not understand the scope and the significance of that revelation. He said, this revelation you have brought have become the foundation upon which the church will be built. So, the impute of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit forged what an accurate witness should be. So every time you try to give expression to a reality, you must first of all be certain that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit have their impute in it. Because what the Father does is that He quickens understanding. The Father does what? He quickens understanding. He is the custodian of all knowledge. So every time an understanding comes to you, is because the father permits it are we together but it's not enough for you to function at the realm of weakenings i'm sure most of you here once and again you've had revelations about what god wants you to do sometimes you even had visions of it some of you have seen yourself preaching to a multitude of persons some of you have seen yourself walking in different spheres of human endeavor but have you become it? So it's not enough to have quick things. See, a lot of people pride themselves in the ability to know things. Yeah, I know this, I know this, I saw this. In fact, when they come to a place, they want you to know, yeah, I saw this, yes, I saw this, I saw this. But most of the things they are seeing, no one is coming to pass. Even their life is not enjoying transformation, even though they are seeing a lot of things. There is nothing wrong with what they are seeing. And what they are seeing is very accurate. But they stop at the level of quickening. And when you stop at the level of quickening, you don't have authority to establish. You saw that Peter, who was quickened by the Father a moment ago, and gave an accurate revelation and perspective about Jesus, the next moment became a toy in the hands of the devil. 
Do you see the danger of stopping only at the threshold of quickening? You pick things from the realm of God. Very beautiful. But it's a crime to stop there. Because you still be a victim of the operation of the intelligence of darkness. He drew Jesus to the side and rebuked him. And Jesus looked at him and said, Get behind me, you set up. He said, For thou sufferest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. That was the guy that was quick in the moment ago. And Satan didn't stop there. Jesus came back again at another time and said, Ah, Simon, Simon. He said, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. The guy who sees a lot of things in the spirit, do you see his weight in the spirit realm? Do you see his stature? Compared to Satan, he was like wheat. And Satan didn't need a blade. He said, he just wants to sift you. you. Do you wonder now why you see many prophets who are deep in immorality? They don't have capacity in the spirit. They can give you, they can x-ray you and give you a download of everything. And they pride themselves in it. But they can't bring anything to pass. There's no authority. The guy that picks things from the throne of God, he says, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Because if all you do is to see and pick things from the realm of God, you are light. You are still not relevant in the scheme of things. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. But my goal is not to pray for your faith not to fail. My goal is for you to recover. When you recover, you will now gain the stamina that is needed for you to instruct the body. Because where God wants to take you to is a point where you have the stature to bring to pass the policies of heaven. He said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. That was the emphasis of Jesus. But it would have been very disastrous. Because Peter would have remained at the level of picking things from the realm of God. Interacting with the Father and being quickened to give revelation and perspective to things. But he wouldn't have the stature to establish. And if he doesn't have the stature to establish, he cannot bring to pass the purposes of God. So the first layer in the technology of witness is the ability to receive perceptions from heaven. And that is available to everybody that is born again. In John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus said, Except the man be born again, he cannot perceive of the realities of heaven. So perception in the spirit is the heritage of the saved, the heritage of the believer. But it's a cause for a believer to only remain at the point where he can perceive things from the realm of God. Because God has higher intentions concerning the believer. There are things that God wants to implement on the face of the earth. There are purposes, policies that God has spoken before the foundations of the world. But these policies are separated into different dispensations. And in our dispensation, we are the ones that God is looking on to, to bring these things to pass. So it will be a cause and a taboo for us to remain only at a level where we can perceive what, what God wants to do. Come to a place and say, ah, God wants to do this, God wants to do this, God wants to do this. And then you go away. And then a generation will be lost. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. The man that revealed Christ was now trying to fight the purpose of the Christ. He was rebuking him sharply not to die, not to go to the cross. Oh well, no, this is the Christ. Then why did the Christ come? So the man who picks from the realm of God sometimes becomes the tool that the devil used to fight the purpose of God. Somebody comes and says, yes, from what I see, there will be a revival in this church in two months' time. And then people begin to pray. Then when the revival comes, it starts with a young lady in the choir. And then the guy stands up. Ah, we are the men of stature in this church. How can a revival start without us? And then he begins to shut that lady down. Shut that lady down. The revival he saw, because he was quickening, is beginning to find expression. But because all he knew was quickness, he had become the tool the devil is using to shut down what God wants to do. We cannot stop at the level of quickening. If we stop at that level, our witness will not be complete. Our witness will not be accurate. Because when God brings a witness, God wants to enter into partnership with humanity in order to bring to pass that which he has witnessed through the vessel of man. The next thing is that we journey into the workings of Christ. After we have received the quickening of God, then the spirit of wisdom begins to instruct us. Jesus begins to speak to us. 
You see, it was Jesus that gave perspective to that which Peter saw. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But he didn't even know what that revelation meant. Jesus began to instruct him. He said, this thing you have seen is the father that has showed you. But the reason the father has brought this revelation to you is because the father wants to raise a church. This church the father wants to raise is the conduit through which the purposes of God will find expression for this realm. This church the father wants to raise is the, the symbol and the umbrella under which everything God wants to facilitate and fast track among humanity will find expression. He said, and this thing that the father is raising, here we fight it. He said, but don't worry. So long as you continually receive it from the spirit, the gate of hell will not prevail against it. So if you want that which God wants to do to remain, always go to the spirit and bring it from there. Because if you bring it from a realm where hell cannot find expression, hell cannot fight against it here. Every time hell wants to fight here, what hell is trying to fight has its root in heaven. And because hell does not have authority in heaven, it cannot prevail. He says, so stick to this strategy. Always receive from the spirit. And what you are receiving from the spirit, be aware that it is something that God himself is trying to advance among humanity. So when you begin to perceive the voice of Jesus, through the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, then your witness begins to gain stature. You know the first witness that Peter received from the father? Peter did not have any participation in it. There was no role Peter had to play in it. So Peter did not have red advance, even though he was speaking from God. But when the layer of the sun came in, the first thing he said is, Thou art Peter. You see, this revelation is what God is going to work with. But thou art Peter. The people through which this revelation will come, they will be the ones to steward it. So until the impute of the son came in, the guy that picked had no participation. And if he has no participation, he has no relevance. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Who will stand at the gate? Thou art Peter. So when God begins to give you things because you are saved, you are born again, you need to learn how to stay with Jesus so that you he gives you interpretation to the things that he's saying. That's the second layer of witnessing. But that's not my emphasis. So I may not necessarily go deep in explaining and exploring that. The third layer is the layer of the spirit. You see, when I saw the Daniel generation, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, very heavy assignment. I just knew I needed to take time to show us a few things so that we understand what because the caption of this meeting if you plunge into it if you plunge into it let me tell you the truth it will lead all of us into different destinations some of us it will lead us into death the death of matters some of us it will lead us into abundance so our hearts need to be prepared I was sharing with them the captain when they were talking earlier today I said if people have understanding there will be no competition God two people comes before God makes up their mind to do everything he wants them to do and then wisdom for prosperity begins to find expression in this man find expression so he begins to and before you know it he prospers everything this other one does does not secure wisdom for prosperity rather he secures hunger for prayer hunger for prayer and then he finds himself praying more every time he presses into god it is appetite for prayer that is developed so at the end of the day two of them started from one point of decision this one grows and becomes a prosperous man this one grows and becomes a heavy intercessor if you look at them and judge them from circumstance you may be you may be very wrong this guy has everything that life has to offer this guy is very very poor in the natural and then you say ah uh -uh this man is serving God right you don't have understanding because if you judge them from the context of kingdom this guy that has prosperity all that is his is what he will eat and drink every other thing he has is for advancement of the kingdom so the power God has given to him to advance the kingdom is wealth this guy all that he will need for eating and drinking God will still provide 
but the power God has given to him is prayer power to push the kingdom forward. So help me, please. Prayer power to pull the kingdom forward. So if you don't see from the realm of God, you may be judging from natural things. And then you say, this man has lost out. He's not wise. And then when you even come to preach, you start saying, some of these people that think spirituality is all about praying, all about fasting. Uh, you are not wise. There is a higher vista through which we see things from the realm of God. You said, thou shall remember the Lord your God for it is him that giveth thee power to get wealth. Why? That you may advance the covenants that he has given to your fathers even unto this day. This man with his 10 billion will not need to eat what this man cannot eat. All they need to eat is to be satisfied. Out of human appetite, he can go to tantalizers or go to extravaganzas and order for chicken, order for this. When he enters into his tummy, it is amino acid, glycogen, glucose. That's what is there because that's what the body needs. He is going for yogurt and chicken because of appetite. But what God is providing for him is amino acid, glycogen to strengthen him. This guy will eat Gary. When he goes to his stomach, it's glucose, glycogen to strengthen him. What God is interested in is not the appetite, it's the kingdom advancement. So he's not richer than this man. Both of them are equally rich. And what their body needs is the same. But he has power through finance and prosperity to advance the kingdom. He has power through prayer to advance the kingdom. This one we call this one Kana. He doesn't have understanding. This one we call this one foolish. He doesn't have understanding. So when you come to a point where you begin to make statements like this, you need to be schooled to have accurate understanding so that when you begin to go far, as your path begins to journey through your purpose, you will not be discouraged. Because if we begin, some of us may join into wealth and we will thank God that we made the decision. Some of us will be led to where we will be slaughtered. But that place where our blood touches the ground, it becomes a memorial. Sometimes the kind of death you receive is what will justify the life you have lived. Some of us, it's our death that will give us relevance, not our lives. When we make this kind of decision, it will open a lot of paths and a lot of channels. If you don't have understanding, you may end up distracting yourself. So when you are close to a point where heaven wants to partner with you, when the government of Zion wants to make an appearance, that is when you back out and say, God, I don't tire. No, you only me they serve God. Let me go and look for a job. Then you go and start doing business. <laughs> this is why we begin by hearing heaven first. And we continue hearing heaven in order to stay accurate. You are taught Christianity of principles. Principles don't make men. Principles result in dislocation. Dislocation. The men whose life you are itemizing as principles, they didn't leave them as principles. Those were the things they caught in heaven and it was peculiar to them. You go study their life and you gather principles. You pick one from Daniel, pick one from Paul. Who told you they lived the same lives? They secured what they were living from the spirit realm. The goal of God for every one of us is to be able to access that realm. Because you may be a politician, I may be a preacher. And she may be a singer. You may be an artist. What principle are we going to apply? We need to catch wisdom from the realm of God. Because my own principle as a preacher may be to pray and fast every day for five hours. You are a politician. If you do that, you will never attend to the quality of power. You are an artist. Your principle may be watch other people, learn the skill from them, develop your phonetics, develop your acting skill. That's your own. The moment I try to pick what you are doing, I will be dislocated. That's why you see apostles today in businesses and you see politicians carrying the mic. So every day they carry the mic, they talk about money. You need to give to God. You know, God loves you. You need to... All their message is money. They are businessmen. They want to use the gospel to justify it. They are businessmen. That's their DNA. They can't preach any other thing.
at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see There is power in your name. <laughs> Miracles happen in your name. Mandela Hatia. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. At the center of it all, at the center of it all, it's you that I see. Sakabara halatoa. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. Oh, oh, oh. as we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that. power in your name. Because if you choose the path of the spirit, you must be accurate. If you are not accurate, you are finished. There are many other things you can do and manage, not spirit life. It's either it is the Jesus way or it is not. Apostle told us, he said, if you make Jesus a part of your life, you will be ruined. It has to be the center and circumference of all of your prayer. Ghost has his own protocol. He doesn't quicken you. He doesn't educate you. He carries you into reality. He carries you into experience. He brings you into the realm of the sphere and the totality of the person of the Christ. The goal of the Holy Spirit is to journey you in the path of the Spirit until you come into the center of the essence of Jesus. So that when you come out, only Jesus will be seen. It's a strange kind of witness. A man can be quickened. A man can receive perception from the Spirit, but his heart will be full of darkness. A man can receive education of the Spirit, be trained, but his life will be a fountain of wickedness. Not when the Holy Ghost schools you. The schooling of the Spirit is different. He doesn't bring you knowledge. He carries you into knowledge. So that first of all you become that which you know. It is when the syllabus of the Holy Ghost was opened up in the New Testament. That we began to hear different kinds of names for knowledge. Before then you had things like idol. You had things like Sophia. You know idol become aware. So Jesus tells you something and you are ah is this how it is. Sophia is intelligible interpretation of knowledge. It's also called wisdom. But when the Holy Ghost came, we began to hear things like epignosis. We began to hear things like ginosko. 
you participate in until you become that which you know. It is a knowledge that is experiential. It's like intercourse. Oneness with that which is known. Syllables of wisdom began to open and we hear things like sorenesis. We journey from Sophia, sorenesis. Knowledge walking within you, giving you interpretation beyond that which humankind can touch. We began to hear things like phronesis. Phronesis is a knowledge that gives empowerment to do that which is known. You don't only know. The moment you know it, you bring it to pass by the Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost was not with you. Can you see me to realm of reality? Manta Setaka. The center of the Lord is you.
There's a miracle the Lord is about to do in the life of somebody now. You see, the Bible says Jesus breathed on them and opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Somebody's understanding is about to be opened. Somebody's understanding is about to be opened. Somebody's understanding is about to be opened. Separa sivondo sapatigua, devela tamisku rahapindo karatatas, peraso tametalia, recebendo parakidos, rekapapaparo soneta, barila hate komer. Sega pati ke popopo sabamanta. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Then no sata, I beheld in the spirit. Listen, listen, listen. I beheld in the spirit, and I saw a young damsel interceding in the place of prayer before the program. And this is your prayer point. This is your prayer point. That everything the Lord wants to realize in this meeting, may you lay hold first-hand experience of it. First-hand experience. You see. The power of God will pick that lady now. Father, oh my God, oh my Jesus. Let your hand descend on her now, Lord, and bring answers to her prayers. Bring answers. Bring answers, Holy Ghost. Bring answers, Holy Ghost. Mi la brasa pone tala cariata, velesco rahapadilo sale a tapara, rababate que bondoro de bocoras. Ola cabaso lo banata le ataboata. Don't get distracted. He sent his word to Jacob, he lighted unto Israel. O mama saraba bonde le de porias. Ara safata para bomasa latina scabarande. Adro safra tabaraka toa, rese dembro nos kapeta barabanis. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Listen, listen. The Lord is going to release rods of signs and wonders as we round up this meeting. Tomorrow is impartation night. You thought God was going to move mightily in signs and wonders. God has selected persons that is going to hand the rod of signs and wonders. You will go to your hostels, go to your lecture rooms. Things that you trusted God for will begin to happen on their own accord. They will begin to happen. They will begin to happen. Your sphere of influence will be swept with signs and wonders. Things will be happening on their own accord. A new era is upon you. You may be seated. Let's, let's share the word of God a bit. Jesus. The witness of the Spirit is different from the witness of the Father. The Father quickens you, brings you understanding into things that were locked up in the spirit realm. He opens you up and drop insight, drop wisdom. Things that at all time you did not have understanding of. You just know them. It quickens. The song brings you lexicon of knowledge and insight, interpretation and perspective into secret things so that you can have understanding of their realities. But the Holy Ghost has a different kind of witness. He carries you into the realm of reality. Because the goal is for you to become. <laughs> it is when the Holy Ghost brings you into reality. That the fullness of your ordination can begin to find expression. So that who you are in God will begin to manifest. You will not just be talking about God. You will not just be talking about the things of God. 
you will become a visible expression of the God nature. The kind of witness that the Holy Ghost has to offer is a bit intricate, it's a bit deep. It's a witness that begs transformation. It's a witness that makes you become a visible expression of the reality of Jesus. So that you don't only have a witness through vocabulary. Everything about you become an expression of God. You come to a point where people look upon you and they have nothing to say, but they just believe that Jesus is the Christ. Ah, I heard stories of men like John Knox. A man will walk into a brothel, a walk walk into a club, and he will hold on to a prostitute. The lady will be having fun and dancing because of the music in the disco. After some time, what he carries will begin to transfer. And suddenly the lady will begin to cry. As people look upon her, what is happening? Everybody will begin to cry. He will not say anything, but the whole club will turn into a revival center. No scripture. He was a visible expression of the righteousness of God. You see, in the spirit realm, the dimension of God that you represent, your visible expression models it. Now, that's the goal of God on earth. <laughs> if you are a carrier of the righteousness of God, everywhere you come, righteousness will be speaking. If you are a carrier of the holiness of God, it speaks. If you are a carrier of the prosperity of God, it speaks. Our expressions, our very natural configuration are supposed to be inundated with the life of God sufficiently that it mirrors heaven everywhere we come to. See, that's the reality you find in heaven. So the Bible speaks of Lucifer, for instance, when he was still the anointed cherub that walked the coals of fire. You know, he was in charge of worship in heaven. And on account of his responsibility in heaven, he had access to some very sacred things in God. For example, the Bible said he walks in the coal of fire. The Bible said he is the anointed cherub that covered it. The Bible said he was the brightness. In fact, he's called the son of the morning. You know, if you read Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 11, the Bible said, Thou that sealed the sun. You know, he was so bright in glory that if he shows up, the sun becomes dark. His light overshadowed the sun. Decked with all kinds of wisdom. But because part of his duty was to give expression to the emotions of God through worship. He doesn't need to sing. He was wired like a musical instrument. So he said, thy, thy tablets and thy pipes were created in thee from the day of thy, of thy, of thy creation. So if Lucifer wanted to produce a sound, all he needs to do is to he just makes a move and then he is wired with that sound. What he's thinking begins to manifest because he's wired. You see, that's the technology by which we transmit the power of God consciously. When you hold on to somebody, you know, Jesus began to teach me, he said, the power of God is a tangible reality in the spirit realm. It's because it's a reality in another dimension. That's why in this dimension it looks as if it's intangible. But it's a tangible reality. And he said the power of God is conducted through your mind. He said that is why I place a very rigid government on the mind of the people that work for me. So that they can steward those realities. So you hold on to somebody. If you want the person to be slain, as you conduct the power of God, the slaining anointing will hit the person. Sometimes you come for a meeting and the people's heart is rigid. As you preach, preach, you enter into a realm and then you begin to conduct a kind of compassion from God for their heart so that they can be saved. And as you conduct it over time, the people begin to weep. You learn these things in the presence. Now, a point comes where as you tarry with the Holy Ghost, He carries you into depths in God until you begin to reconfigure. You see, the Bible said Moses, after he stayed in the glory, 
as he descended from the mount, he said he wished not that his face shone like the sun. He was being remodeled. Jesus, in the place of prayer, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, the Bible said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. You are carried to a point where your witness goes beyond what you say. You become a visible expression of what you stand for. So you come to a place and people who are sinning, they begin to couple themselves. You didn't say anything. You came with an atmosphere of righteousness. People who are boastful about sin. Hmm. Oh boy, well done. As you just come, everybody begins to find their way. You came with something they, could, they cannot withstand. The goal of the Holy Spirit is to carry you into that place. Where the dimension of Jesus that by ordination you are designed to manifest begins to clothe itself upon you until you become that which you are brought into. That's why the witness of the Holy Ghost is different. The witness of the Holy Spirit is not just to bring you knowledge and understanding. It's to carry you into a reality until you become that which is known. That is why he said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see, this liberty we talk about, it has a lot of scope and a lot of application. The first application that is obvious is the termination of the workings of darkness so that you are saved and allowed the expression to do the will of God. That's the very obvious expression of that word liberty. Are we together? But if you read the next verse, you see that that liberty is beyond terminating the works of darkness. That liberty transcends it into transformation. A transformation that brings you into the realm of God. So, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty for you to enter into regions of expressions in the Spirit. If you make encounter, if you have an encounter with the Spirit of God, and you align with Him, He carries you into places in God. You now have liberty that you did not have before in the realm of God. So a man who tarries for long in the presence begins to enter into things that he did not study. Suddenly you enter into a vote of healing. Suddenly you are a worshiper. Before now, yes, you are saved from the world. You are not under the influence of sin. The power of sin does not hold you bound. But you've been singing people's song, people's song. Suddenly a kind of liberty is granted you. You now enter into an assembly in heaven where you begin to hear angels sing. That's a dimension of liberty. And the more you are carried into these things, the more effective your operations on earth will become. Meanwhile, let me show you what liberty in the context of transformation is. Because if you don't have this kind of liberty, you may not be an effective witness, even if so much is happening around your life. Are we together? Now, you see that upon the fall, man became denatured. Man became denatured. If you study the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, 27, you hear that there are three things that God imputed in man when he created him. The first thing he imputed in man was his image. Man was a possessor of the image of God. The second thing was that man was, sometimes we gather around, we gather the team of prayer warriors, and then for three hours, out, 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 we speak in tongues. And then when we leave, we are sweating everywhere. We just say, oh boy, that's been with three hours. We, we, uh, we battle for three hours. Three hours with a demon. Somebody else removed handkerchief and they placed it and demons left. We pride in the wrong things. Somebody is so proud that he battled with a demon for four hours. Because the message he wants to send to you is that he has resilience. Meanwhile, it's to his shame. But the reason he's talking like that is also the reason why he couldn't cast the demon out. Because the gate of pride is open. So the demon has legal right to latch onto him. The Bible said, love not the world. He said, they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. So every time you open these three gates, there is a frequency that demonic interferences can latch onto you. So when you struggle with the things of God, it's because an appetite is open. You are, part, you are participating with darkness. So how do you expel it? Somebody is needing prayers. 
And all he wants people to know is that his tongues are dangerous tongues. And they are dangerous tongues. The kind of tongues he speaks, they are dangerous. You are emitting that kind of pride and arrogance. And then you are hoping that your tongues will bless people. It's a contradiction. A fountain that brings out causes cannot bring out blessings at the same time. And the only way this error, this denatured operation can be corrected is through the witness of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Ghost carries you through a, a, a very rigid government that brings you through the river, through the water, through the fire until alignment is secured. Then every gate of corruption is locked. At that point, you are able to mingle with reality. He said, according as his divine power. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that brought us to glory and virtue. And he didn't stop there. He said, when you become a partaker of the divine nature, it means you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the witness of the Holy Spirit, while he's bringing you to a point of participation in the God nature, so that you can witness for him through your life he is also taming the tendencies and proclivities of darkness and cutting off the debris of the devil that at all time were latched onto you so a man comes out from his walk with the holy spirit and he becomes a pure expression of jesus you can literally touch jesus through his life when he speaks to you he speaks deeper than your mind he goes deep into your heart that is when a message is no longer strong and powerful because of its length or the level of intelligence through which it is wired. That person is not just talking about things. He is talking what he is. John the Beloved said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have seen, we have looked upon, and we have handled. We have handled means we have mingled with it. He said, That is what we are bringing to you. That's the point where his witness is accurate. I'm not coming to tell you about what I heard. I'm not coming to tell you about what I saw. I'm coming to tell you about what I have become. At that point, you can die for it. At that point, even you cannot deceive yourself or turn yourself out of it anymore. You can't persuade yourself out of it. Because even the very cells of your being have been wired to become this thing. It will be difficult for you at that point to say this thing is a lie. There is nothing, even if you go through the worst circumstances, you will stand your ground. Don't you read the scripture and wonder the kind of conviction some persons demonstrate? The Bible said women brought their children back to life. These are not preachers. By what means? They came to a point where they say this thing we believe is life so death cannot take our child they stood there for days until the dead came back to life he says some in the face of deliverance they rejected it so that they might have a better resurrection no wonder the bible said the world is not worthy for the names of those ones to be mentioned they lived above the earth realm they were breathing the same oxygen with you but they were standing in Zion while they were alive. It is the witness, the technology of the witness of the Holy Spirit. You come to a point where you submit to Him. He has the authority to mingle through your emotion. He has the authority to mingle through your mind. He corrects your mind. You know the soul was not created. The soul was not formed. God created the spirit. God formed the body. Are we there now? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it said, In the image of him, he created he them. Male and female, he created them. The word create is the word bara. Bara means to make out of nothing. That means this entity, he was not part of the visible creation. He came out of the visible creation. The whole creation was complete. Then God fetched this entity he was bringing in now from outside of creation. And the only thing outside of creation is God himself. So man was fetched from within God because God is not made up of anything. He fetched him out of himself. He came from outside of creation. And then in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 we say he formed him out of the dust of the ground. So he now fetched matter. 
And then this thing he carried from outside of creation, he now put it in matter. It was the interaction between God and matter that is called the soul. So the soul was not created, the soul was not formed. The soul became. When that which came from God touched that which was created. And that is why the soul is the region of expression. So just the way you have three gates in the soul, you also have three gates in the body. You have three gates in the spirit. There are five senses. There are five, there are five spiritual senses. Don't get me wrong. You have the sense of hearing in the spirit. Are we there? John chapter 10 verse 27 tells us about hearing the spirit. Jesus said, my sheep heareth my voice and they know me and they follow and all of that. Right? You have the sense of seeing. If you study 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 4 to verse and then there about to hear about Elijah. He prayed for Gehazi's eyes to be opened so that he can see. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 14 to 17. For his eyes to see because he said we have more on our side than they. And his eyes open. You have the sense of smell. You have the sense of touch. Are we there? You have all of these senses. But all of these senses are categorized into different constituents of your spirit. For example, your sense, your eye is on your skin and it's in the part of the head. Is it not amazing that four out of the five senses are in your head? So different regions of your body host and houses different parts of your senses. The same way these five senses are housed by different components of your spirit. The spirit is divided into three. You have communion, you have conscience, and you have intuition. Are we there? You have communion, conscience, you have what? Intuition. The soul is divided into three. You have the mind, you have the emotions, and you have the will. The mind is where your reasoning, your memory, your intellect, everything is. It's the region of reasoning. Right? And your body is also categorized into three. Even though you have five senses. It's categorized into the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The way the soul operates is that the mind interacts with the intuition in the spirit. So when knowledge is furnished to your spirit, it's the mind that picks it. Your emotion is tuned to the communion in the spirit. So when you interact with the presence of God, you are overwhelmed, you start crying, you feel a lot of things. Communion is taking place. Outside of communion, your emotion doesn't react much. Are we there? Hello? Hope we are together. I'm trying to explain some things as I try to round up. Your mind interacts with the intuition, a component of your spirit. Your emotion interacts with the communion and then your will interacts with the conscience. That's why you take decision either by the allowance of your conscience or by the disallowance of your conscience. The same way your mind reacts with the lust of the eyes. So you see something, you begin to calculate what to do, what to do, what to do. As you desire something, the lust of the flesh, your emotions go on rampage. Are we together? These are networking. It's a network between spirit, soul, and body. The network between spirit, soul, and body. And then you take action in the flesh when your pride is skyrocketed. When the soul is trained by the Holy Spirit, what it does is that it disaligns from the body. Now, the flesh will always be corruption. Always. Even now that we are saved, the Bible said this is the body of sin. The flesh will always be corruption. But as you interact with the Holy Spirit, what it does is that it empowers and invigorates the soul. So the soul constantly stays aligned with the spirit. So your mind will only focus on the intuition. Your will will only focus on the conscience. And your emotion will only focus on communion. You begin to desire the presence. You want to talk what God is talking a new order of civilization is born within you and as you disalign with the spirit what happens is that your 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 soul is now connected and plugged to your body you only do things based on what you see based on what you desire you fall to the level of the animal life but through communion with the spirit a kind of civilization is activated within you where your soul becomes a visible expression of what is happening in your spirit at that point, you are not only delivered from the denatured protocol of death, you are brought into a new kind of life where you begin to see what God sees. You say what God says and you do what God does.
That is when the witness of the Holy Spirit is concerned. A man who has the witness of the Holy Spirit, he can now minister the Spirit. The reason we go to church and not much happen is that a man who is still aligned to the body is trying to tell you spirit reality. He can preach the whole doctrine of righteousness. You will continue in sin. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8, he said, in as much as we have loved you, we have not only taught you the gospel of Christ, he said we have imparted unto you the very substance of our soul. This man has become, he has journeyed through the path of transformation. His spirit and his soul have secured oneness. At this point now, it's not amazing for him to know things about God. It's not amazing for him to talk and then God is imparted in people because he is plugged perpetually into the realm of God. That's when witness is accurate. And this kind of witness, Paul gave an analogy about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. He calls it the ministration of the spirit. He calls it the ministration of life. The Daniel generation cannot rise until we come to that point of absolute transformation where alignment is secured. Hope you know that Daniel functioned by an excellent spirit. And all of that began because the Bible said in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, he said they proposed in their hearts not to defy themselves with the king's meat. And in verse 20, 21, he said when the king inquired of them, he said in all matters of science, in all matters of wisdom, he said they were 10 times better than their peers. Do you know the people he was competing with? They were not competing with the scholars in the class. Now, if you are in the class and you are failing, it's bad enough. It's pitiable. Because you are failing with people that are operating at the same at the frequency of the mind. Daniel, they went beyond the mind. They were contending with wizards, witches, astrologers, necromancers, people who could consult the dead. These were the kind of people that Daniel and his friends were ten times better than. Ten times. Why? They choose to align with the spirit. They said they will not defy themselves. And when the wife of the king saw that what was happening in these people is not ordinary, she went and did a research about them, including all of the heads in Babylon. Because the Bible said there was no way, there is no place in which you could fought Daniel except in his relationship with his God. That means the people began to study Daniel as a project. By what means is this man like this? They will check through his window. They will plant spies to look. And then they discover that, okay, okay, okay. Three times in a day, this man prays facing Jerusalem. So let nobody pray in the land. The queen came when the writing showed up on the wall. He said, no, there is a man in your kingdom. In the days of your father, he said, this man, the spirit of the holy gods dwell in him. The guy was not doing what he was doing because he was wise. He was not doing what he was doing because he studied. The spirit of the holy gods dwelt in him. He said he had excellent wisdom. He said light and excellent wisdom is in this Daniel. He has ability to confound people and to explain hard sentences. Why? It was by the spirit. The witness of the spirit is what is going to take your life. From everything that is mortal to everything that is immortal. From everything that is corruption to everything that is perfect and impeccable as far as the standard of God is concerned. Until you come to that point where alignment is achieved. Where commitment to the Holy Spirit becomes the central definition of your life. Even if heaven opened today and they gave you a syllabus of everything that will happen in Zaria. You will not bring it to pass. Because you have not become... Until a man becomes, he cannot do the biddings of God. The witness of the Holy Spirit is the unveiling of a government that is celestial in nature. A government that comes to fight everything that is flesh. A government that comes to separate you from everything you are tied to in the flesh. A government that seeks to suck you into itself until you become a part of that government. So that when you go to a place and speak, the government will show up. When you see a man have power, it's not because he's carrying power on his shoulder. Everywhere he speaks, that government that he has become a part of begins to speak. The blocks of this building have been so fused into one 
If you break any part now, they won't say you are breaking the block. They will say you are breaking the building. It has become one. That's the kind of witness that the Holy Ghost wants to bring us into. The Holy Ghost wants to carry us into reality. And in an attempt to do that, He will shut down everything that is not God. So that He can impute everything that is God in you. The salvation experience is the first layer. But if you stop there, you will not be relevant. There is a place in God where every one of us must stand. It is the place of our ordination. And until we stand there, we will not be relevant. Can you rise up as we pray now? See, when I'm rounding up my message, I try to keep it calm. So that when we, we declare and make things happen by the Spirit of God, it will not be an emotional thing. Come to realize that most, most of us, activity, we have been, different kinds of activities have educated, educated our emotions. So when this kind of thing begins, naturally our emotions respond and then we call it God. No wonder we are far from transformation. Ask the Lord now. Make a conscious submission to the government of the Holy Spirit. You see, the, the government is rigid. It may come and deny you sleep. And tell you, from today, 1 to 3 a.m., you will stay with me in prayer. You see, at that point now, it's not emotion again. It is taking advantage of grace to empower your will to do His will. You see why you can fall in church and go back and become nothing? Because when that government comes, it excuses your emotion. That time is a conscious decision you make based on definite interactions. It shows up. And it says, um, you like Facebook, but every time you go on Facebook, it's pictures you see. Now, apart from the fact that you are wasting yourself, those pictures you are seeing, they are imparting something to your soul. So from today, no more Facebook. You will struggle, you will carry your phone, you want to log in. And then you say no. You say no. You will only become stronger to the degree which you are lying. When you hear a man speak and things happen, what is manifesting is degree of obedience. Every one of us have the fullness of God. You see, of his fullness have we all received grace heaped upon grace. But the extent of him to which we manifest is the degree of obedience that we have secured. Can you make a conscious decision? Some of you may make that decision now and you will not be able to wear half of your dress again. Half of your dress, you may not be able to wear them again. Now, it's not because somebody came and said, Don't wear trousers! Mm -mm, that's religion. The Holy Ghost will bring a government. That one you do it consciously. And as you are making that decision, you are asking Him to help you. Because you know that what you are about to enter into will require an energy that is not factored within the realm of mortality. It is an adventure into the supernatural, it's an adventure into the immortal dimension of human existence. You must fetch off an energy that is not within you. Because everything that is within you is aligning with corruption. But right now, the word of the Lord has come to you and you want to strengthen yourself. You want him to carry you by his spirit into a place where you can become that which was written concerning you before the foundations of the world. It's time to make decisions. I prefer people making decisions in meetings now than seeing a lot of things happen. It's time to make decisions. The spirit realm is availing itself to you. Will you stretch forth the hand of fellowship? You see, man of God was sharing with us earlier how that they are making a plane that can move almost as fast as the speed of light. From US to China. It used to be 13 hours with supersonic aircraft. Now they are beating it to matters of minutes. What does it suggest to you? Science is trying to beat time. It's trying to beat space. 
and is trying to receive ability to alter the molecular structure of matter because they understand that the advantage the spirit realm has over us is the absence of time space and matter the goal of science is to become a god of itself and the only way it can achieve it is to beat time is to beat space is to beat matter that's the advantage of the spirit realm science wants to become a god but it is not given to it you and i have a free ticket in the holy spirit to advance beyond everything time has to offer by what technology did enoch in the seventh generation after adam to travel into rapture it's a journey that science can never imagine a man can enter into a reality that is many dispensation away from his time of existence it is a technology in the holy spirit the bible says enoch walked with god <laughs> when you walk with god you travel faster than the, the fastest being and the fastest technology in time enoch walked with god by what means it was enoch that prophesied that in the era of the Amegidon, he said the Lord will descend with 10,000 of his saints. He saw what will happen when this world is rolled away. He traveled beyond space. You can come to a point where you outsmart time. What the enemy is planning 10 years ahead, you decode it now and you change it. You see your children coming. He said he saw the names of his children. He know how many he will give birth to. Your children will not be candidates of cancer. If they like, they should bring, they bring immunization, bring all kinds of things. You declare their destiny before they were born. You travel away from time. You travel out of space. You confound the powers of matter. You can literally change the molecular structure of things. It is by alignment with the Holy Spirit. These matters are deeper than doctrine. You can know all the doctrine, but you will be as weak and you will be a puppet in the hands of the devil. They are not matters of doctrine. They are realities. If everyone will synchronize with the Holy Spirit, I assure you, it's enough. It's enough. The reason we hear all the teaching but nothing changes is because there is no commitment to the Holy Ghost. Spirits begin to walk from where you make commitment. It is your commitment that opens the door for the workings of spirits. Consciously in your heart, make a decision. Make a decision and you will save yourself from the plague of mortality. People go before they read the course, they try to check the one that is more advantageous and then they kill themselves to read that course. Parents try to model the lives of their children, bring home teachers, bring this to force them into this because all their calculations is in the natural. Men give bribes to go into jobs that has nothing to do with their ordination. We don't seek jobs, we are sent into all the worlds. If you find him in the army, he was sent there to better dimension. We don't look for jobs because we are not sustained by mortal men. We are not sustained by the wisdom of man. We are sustained by the powers that hold all things together. Did you not hear when he said, cast thy bread upon the waters? He said, you will find it after many days. Let me tell you what he's saying. God gives you seed to sow. Bread is what you should eat. He said, but there is a place you come in trust where you can cast even what he gave you to eat. He said, you don't know the evil that will come upon the earth. Give a portion to seven, give a portion to eight. Why? Even if the whole earth were to melt, you will survive. Because you are powered by a force that is deeper than everything in time. Can you believe it? Looking for job. Try this, try that, try that. It shows that you don't hear from the spirit realm. When you begin to hear, you will join into your inheritance. Sons, sons don't wonder. We walk in pursuit of inheritance. When Abraham left his father's house, left his kindred, left his nation, he was not going to look for bread and green pasture. He was in search of inheritance. The Bible said he was looking for a city with a foundation whose builder is God. That's what drives us around. Not relocating to Abuja because they say it's a federal capital territory. You are going there because there's a window you have to open so that the dimension in God can begin to find expression. How you will survive is not part of your, your, your equation. That one is for him to answer. And you have journeyed with him in trust to a level where you can trust. That's why Elijah can come into the territory and say, Before God, whom I stand, there shall be no rain. And as he left, the spirit guided the step into a brook. He sat there. The ravens came to give him bread in the morning and the evening. Scientific research shows that the most stingy kinds of bread are ravens. When the water dried up, he said, Arise now, go to Sarephat. 
I have prepared a widow to feed you. You are here wasting all your time trying to do all the arithmetic on how you will get a job with Chevron. <laughs> we are far from the spirit. We are far. Pastors even advise people, oh boy, try help yourself. Oh. You hear things like heaven helps those who help themselves. <laughs> have you utilized all the wisdom in scriptures? Say pity. Say pity. Say pity. Ask the Lord to help you. Make conscious decisions. Make conscious decisions. When I began to grow in God, I realized that every man has a message locked up in his spirit. We are not called to preach all the Bible. Everybody has a dimension of Jesus as a message locked up in his spirit. When the Holy Ghost begins to open you up, the passages of scriptures will help you give expression to those messages. And that is why God will send you to definite strategic people and places where your message will be relevant. Those will be the things that will inspire your sojourning on the face of the earth. And you ask the Lord, consciously, consciously, consciously. Some of us have gone for meetings, many meetings. I tell you, many meetings. Until we discover that every other thing will begin to make sense when we have apprehended the Holy Spirit. When we have choose the Holy Spirit, until you come to a point where you choose the Holy Ghost, nothing will make meaning. I went to Randy Clark's meeting in Lagos. I knelt before him. He laid hands on me and said, you will walk in the glory realm. I have ministered in places where white clouds came into the building and people began to scream. I have seen the Chakaina with my tangible eyes. He said, you will walk in the glory. But all those things never came to pass until I choose the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it is when I'm tired and I'm sleeping, He comes and He beckons on me to pray. And I pray for three hours and I don't sense anything. Because it's not coming to wake you to sense something. That time when you are praying, maybe you are giving vocabulary to a life somewhere. And robbers have invaded the house. They are about to rape some virgins. He woke you up so that you can shut that protocol. Time you are praying, enchantments are going up so that demons can be invoked into territories. When you stood up, you stood up as a custodian, you are shutting the gates of darkness. So it's not about feeling there are tangible economies in God, legislating policies in the spirit. Things are deep things. That's why I told you that spirit don't measure realities in time, they measure by life come you say you are 30 years in the Lord they don't know that thing what measure of life have you given expression to these are the economies that spirit judge realities by can you ask the Lord that you are committed you are committed I stood before Benny Hinn. he released the anointing upon me nothing manifested in my life I have met Todd White. Todd White is a street evangelist. He holds people's leg and pull it out. It grows on the street. It's not a church where people know about God and then people are trying to encourage you. He goes to meet Todd. Some of them are smoking while he's praying for them. They are healed. A rugged street evangelist. He held me. He said, what I have, take it. I saw nothing. I met all of these men. Randy Clark is the man that wrote a forward in the school of the seers. Is one of the most notable apostles in the U.S. I stood before Sadhu Savaraj of, in, of a, an, America, an Indian prophet. Sadhu Savaraj, every scripture he has read, the writer of that book comes to meet him. He, reads, he was reading the book of, 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 of Isaiah. And then the prophet showed up. People walk out of the wall and meet him. He has met with Paul and asked questions. What does this scripture mean? He was studying the book of Revelation. He couldn't understand what Revelation 13 was talking about. About the abomination of desolation. And then he began to pray. And John walked into the room and told him this, 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 this is what it means. Daniel spoke about it. He's here now. These are the people that will bring it to pass. Those are the kind of people I spoke about. I knelt down before him. He imparted me. But he translated to nothing. Dr. Paul and Energy have anointed my head. Bishop David Oedeku have prayed for me. I stood before Chris, Reverend Chris, who are killing me. He imparted me with the hidden anointing. I have pursued the anointing. 
When I went for passing on the torch in Lagos, I slept on the crusade ground, praying in tongues every night so that something will rest. But it dawned on me that even if they pour a drum of oil on you, if you don't choose the Holy Ghost and walk with Him, all of them will be seeds and potentials. They will never come to pass. They will never come to pass. I have met the finest of preachers, the finest. And they have laid their hands on me, the finest. Apostle Arume have laid hands on me, giving me garments. He said, you are the one, everything I have in God, you will have it. And you will manifest brighter lights of it. He said, that's what God told me. He said, God told me, raise a company of 12 apostles that will still want the revival to the ends of the earth. He said, you are the first. But it will not translate to anything except as you submit your will to the Holy Ghost. That's when walk with God moves from emotion into a conscious reality. Everything they taught you in touch is how to follow the, the reading. That's a lie. It won't lead anywhere. I experimented it myself. I've met everybody you know has manifestation. And when you have met Benihim to impart you, you have met half of the preachers in the world. Because in this current dispensation, there are few people that have interacted with preachers like Benihim. But it doesn't amount to anything. You may fall under the atmosphere, enjoy the euphoria. You go back and be nothing. Just like Judas lived with Jesus all his life. But he ended up as the son of petition. It will mean nothing. If your will is not submitted to the will of the Holy Spirit, you will be nothing. Jesus was the one that showed us the protocol. He said it is written in the volume of the books, I come to do that way. When he came to Gethsemane, it became too heavy. But he fell upon his knees and he said, Not my way, not thy way. That's the gate into reality. That's the gate into power. That's the gate into relevance. You may do everything that there is to do in the body of Christ. If you are disaligned, you will know where. The men that are mighty in God, they are not men of, of talk. They are not men of activity. They are men of alignment. They are men of obedience. They are men of faith. Talk to Jesus. We have made a religion out of Christianity. The man of God is talking, trying to build an atmosphere so that when the place is charged, he releases the power of God. People fall, boo, 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 and then he moves. Christianity has the largest number in this country today than ever. But we are in the worst scenario. Darkness encroaching the borders of our habitation. There's not one man that can rise and say restore. Everybody is talking. There's been a, there's a prophecy hanging on our generation that a revival is going to bed forth. If there's anything you can do, is pray so that you will be numbered. Pray that you may be relevant in that coming revival. For a few who have stayed in the place of prayer, they've seen themselves in it. For a few. If you have not seen yourself in that move, you need separation. You need separation. We have majored in the minors. The things that don't matter, those are the things that we give all our lives to. When Jesus came, it just turned on me that I never saw Jesus heal any of the apostles. I never saw Jesus did any miracle for them. I was wondering, Lord, you move with these guys, heal everybody. You move with these guys, feed everybody, do all kinds of things. I discovered Jesus never did anything for the apostles. The only thing the Bible said he did, the only miracle he did to them, was to pray for them so that their understanding will be open. But you know the one reminding us about what Reverend Gideon said. He said, when Abraham's children were come of age, he gave gifts to the children of Keturah, but he kept Isaac for the heritage. Sons go for inheritance. You press into God until the powers of your ordination begin to speak. If all you come to receive from Jesus is healing, miracles, just know that they are settling you to go. You are constituting a nuisance. 
The ones that are relevant, the Bible says he called them to be with him that he might send them. The greatest gift you will receive is to have understanding of your work and your heritage in God. That thing will sentence you to stay with Jesus until you apprehend. Because you know the biggest blessing in life is not the reception of property. The biggest blessing in life is for God to find you worthy to send you. To send you into the political corridor, send you into the market, send you into the body of Christ. Send, stay with him until he sends you. But it begins when you make your choice. Consciously to choose his will against your own will. It's time to sing the pledge. It's time to sing the pledge. But we sing the pledge now. You see, there's a mystery of sound. There's a mystery of sound. When you hit an atmosphere in the spirit and you know the sound of that realm, if you sing it, you are transported. Because sound is a transport medium. We have come to that point of making this decision. So we will sing the pledge now. Some of you will be carried. <laughs> the eyes of some of you will open. Some of you, your heart will be broken. You will find yourself weeping. Some of you will come to a point where decisions that were difficult for you, those ones that you don't make, that every time you, you, just, you don't think you can do it, you will receive grace to make those decisions. Have you seen those? I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.